Society has long been fascinated with serial killers down to the detail of their last meal request. What do you think of that? I mean, I understand because it's just like, it's like a morbid fascination of just wanting to know like what motivates these people to be like this. We're gonna look at several serial killers and what they chose for their last meal. I mean, I understand their last meal and why it's significant because it is their last meal and I think we romanticize it more than it what it is. But at the same time, it's why are we so fascinated that we need to know every detail? It seems like the people who get the death penalty honestly just need a lot of mental rehabilitation. Like they're more just like very, very sick individuals that originates from like a really abusive childhood. I'm not a huge fan of the whole death penalty, but there's like some cases where I'm like, okay, you're a psychopath and you killed tons of people. The world is better without you. There's a book or an article or something that I read not too long ago that was kind of sharing all of these criminals like last meals, the last meal requests. And like some of them are super extravagant and some, some of them are super like, Super basic. So that to me is like really interesting to see what people would want as their last meal. Let me show you this first guy. Let me see if you recognize him. Not off the top of my head. From Illinois though. He looks like he dealt coke in the 70s, but I feel like that's not enough for the death penalty. I don't remember his first name, but I know it's Gacy something and he was, he, he would like dress up as a clown. Okay, so this is John Wayne Gacy. Gacy was an American serial killer and rapist who sexually assaulted, tortured, and murdered 33 teenage boys and young men. That's so fucking scary. Oh my God. Prior to his conviction, he was the manager of three KFCs and held a side job as a party clown. This led to him being known as the killer clown. Killer clown? Okay, I can see this guy being a killer clown. Like he looks like a clown that, uh, like gone wild. I already f***ing hate clowns. I'm not a fan. I'm not personally afraid of clowns, but that's like now someone can be like, look, I have a legitimate fear. There was a serial killer who was a clown. For his last meal, Gacy requested 12 fried shrimp, a bucket of KFC, french fries, and a pound of strawberries. Wow. Very, very classy. Uh, see, this is interesting because the amount he gave them. It was a set amount. I haven't eaten today yet. So that looks phenomenal. That looks delicious. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think the thing that makes me the most uncomfortable about this is that all the food's touching. And that's probably not what I should be the most uncomfortable about. The strawberries also just go in. Like, I don't know why, but that's making me think like clown, like cheery and happy. So like the two different sides of him, like the, the, the KFC dude and then like the clown. He didn't understand what was healthy for him necessarily because like even his last meal was very, Indulgent. His last words were kiss my ass. <laughs> now, let's talk about this next person here. Oh, wow, a woman? What? It's gonna be hard just pulling a picture up and knowing the like serial killer's name. That is Aileen blanking on her last name. This is Eileen or Aileen? This is Eileen Warnos. She was an American serial killer who murdered seven men in Florida between 1989 and 1990 by shooting them at point blank range. She claimed that her victims had either raped or attempted to rape her while she was working as a prostitute. Yeah, that's murder, all right. I believe that the first kill was in self-defense um, after like kind of reading stuff about it. But I think kind of after that is when she got like a taste for, ooh, this is, I like <laughs> killing people. So I think after that, that's when she purposely um, led men in and then um, killed them. I remember uh, watching her documentary on Netflix and just watching the way she thought was just really, really strange. She seemed really normal and she was admitting to her crimes. Then the next moment she was like, no, 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 it wasn't me. This was her decision for the final meal. <laughs> wow, really? Just straight black coffee. That's hardcore. Like she didn't even want food. That was waste. You probably get coffee in prison anyway. And it's probably not a good cup of coffee. They do say like, if you drink coffee black, you're a serial killer. Her last words were, I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus on June 6th. Coming back June 6th? That's my birthday. June 6th already happened. Did she come back? It's also scary to think about, it's 2002. You know, it feels like forever ago, but it really wasn't. But I don't think she was a sociopath at all. I'm sorry, I just think she was kind of like a regular person who just like from circumstances of growing up and you know, probably some chemical imbalances in her um, head, just 
you know, kind of went off the rails. Here's our next. They just look like normal people. He's got a serial killer mustache, no, I'm kidding. All male serial killers had like long hair and mustaches and they looked like they led a cult. If you look into his eyes, to me, he just, he looks soulless. He doesn't look all there. This is William George Bonin. He was responsible for the deaths, assaults, and torture of 21 young men and boys between 1979 and 1980 Jeez. in Southern California. Because he repeatedly would dump bodies along the California freeways, he wow. was known as the freeway killer. Oh, did, did you say Southern California? <laughs> Man, see that's, it gets so strange too because you're talking about this and it's like, this just happened where you live, just so you know. He grew up in a dysfunctional family with an alcoholic father and a grandfather who is a convicted child molester. Gosh, yeah. It just makes you think like if he was like molested as a young boy and stuff like that, how that can like warp a person's perception of life and then it's just, it's so f***ed up. I don't think it's a coincidence that his grandfather was a child molester and then he became one too. You don't have to be the person that your parents or your relatives were, but I think it kind of starts you at a disadvantage. This is what he chose for his final meal. He chose a high school lunch? Oh! Damn, yes, he has a damn buffet. Two pizzas, chocolate ice cream, Coke. This is very basic. It was also said that Bonin wanted to die of diabetes before the lethal injection, so he consumed 18 <laughs> servings of Coca-Cola and Pepsi right before his execution. <laughs> Can you imagine you're about to get executed and you're like, I have a stomach ache. That's cool, like if, if I'm gonna go out, I'm going out with a bang. A bang of diabetes and sugar. That's that's how you should go out. It's kind of like a kid fantasy, you know? Like, oh, I want to eat all the pizza and, and soda and ice cream I can, but my parents won't let me. To me, it seems very childlike. I'm guessing these were the only good things in his childhood. Like, these were his go-to comfort items. Here's another. Wow, so weird. The first thought in my mind was he could be an attorney. He looks like, like someone's, like, dad. So if you saw a guy like this, you would, like, trust him. Um, pretty much immediately because he looks like a pretty like trustworthy guy. He has like very big expressive eyes and I feel like he's hiding murder behind them. This is Danny Rowling, AKA the Gainesville Ripper. The Gainesville Ripper? He was responsible for the death of five students in Florida during a four day robbery and murder spree in late August, 1990. You need to like just cut Florida off. That's where it all starts. I feel like he would have had like a nice, like request to like a nice meal. His last meal consisted of lobster tail served with drawn butter, butterfly shrimp with cocktail sauce, a baked potato with sour cream and butter, strawberry cheesecake, and sweet tea. Wow. That's bougie. He is an expensive date. Honestly, that's a pretty great like last meal. He eventually confessed to the murders in a written statement and died singing a gospel hymn. Uh, he's like, oh, I'm sorry I killed a bunch of people. Is that cool? All right, here's our next. You can see like how crazy she is in her eyes. She definitely looks like a grandma. Oh. God, I know who this is. I've definitely seen this face before, but I can't think of their name. This is Velma Barfield, AKA the death row granny, whose victims were all close to her and they all died mysteriously. Victim, like, what do you mean close to her, like family? Her mother, mm -hmm. on and off fiance, second husband, two elderly people she was hired to well. care for, were all done in by arsenic that she added to their food or drink. That's absolutely terrifying because it's someone you wouldn't expect. That's insane, it, like, it's just scary to think, like you never really know someone. Sounds like the plot of an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I'm not eating any of her cookies. I am do not. If she has like a bake sale or anything, just stay away. She would definitely like something like, like a grandma would make, I don't know, like a pot pie. So this was her request. Cheese puffs? Everyone likes a Coke. Is that like the drink of serial killers? She declined her final meal and instead opted for a bag of cheese doodles and a Coke. I mean, it's your, your last meal, you gotta get what you like, I guess. I honestly don't get the people denying their last meals though, like, come on. So her motive in these killings was money. She'd become addicted to prescription drugs after having had a nervous breakdown and her behavior became really erratic. Interesting, okay. So drug addict murderer, that's a new spin. Addiction is a disease. People don't understand or know that, but it is, it takes over the mind, it takes over them physically. Money is the big like root of evil. It's just something everyone wants. It's something people will do anything for. You hear it on the news all the time. People kill for it all the time. They'll kill you for a pair of shoes. Like it's, it's so, so sad. Here is your last. 
Is that Ted Bundy? Yes. Is this Ted, Ted Bundy? Bundy? Correct. Yeah! Everyone gets this now because they have Zac Efron playing him, and then they have the actual, like, Ted Bundy tapes that were on Netflix. I know Hulu's doing something with Ted Bundy as well. So Ted Bundy was an American serial killer, kidnapper, rapist, burglar, and necrophile who assaulted and murdered over 30 people across seven states between 1974 and 1978. Yeah, it's like crazy the amount of people they think he killed because I can't even like prove all of it. His eyes are terrifying. He's staring into my soul and I don't like it. I'm gonna be honest with you. He was like really charismatic as a guy and like people were very surprised to hear that he like did all the crimes. He looks just like a normal white guy. Like you look at this guy, you're like, oh, he doesn't look crazy or anything. He had like a cast on and stuff like that when he kidnapped a girl. And then there was one where he was acting like a cop saying someone like, is your car's being broken into and then they'd go, oh, sh I, he actually gave up a lot of locations about his victims. I mean, it's unknown if he gave up all of them. So fascinated by him because it's just why. Everyone wants to know the why. This is what he ate. Oh, that's a nice breakfast though. You got milk and orange juice? That costs extra. He actually refused the last meal and this was the standard meal that they served him. Steak cooked medium rare, eggs over easy, hash browns, toast with butter and jelly, milk and juice. What jail is that? I wanna go there. How many people are murdering people and then refusing meals? Why do they have a standard? To me, this seems like if you were to say, like, what is the cliche American country breakfast? This is it. I feel like this kind of suits him. You get this at like an IHOP. No one really thought. He was a serial killer because he looked normal and didn't act crazy. This kind of suits him. It seems like the, the through line between all of them is that they had a really rough childhood upbringing, whether either they were like abused or molested. So I think it really starts at home. It depends on how you raise your kid. It's a big responsibility. And if you're a f you're going to make a f we really need to bring it back to the reality that these people did horrible things and very, very atrocious, horrible crimes. And that, like, we need to realize that when we're watching these documentaries or looking at their last meals. I don't think there's ever gonna be a way to stomp out all the evil. So, ending on a lighter note, if you could choose your last meal, what would it be? Yeah, I mean, people have, uh, this is like a normal question, honestly. My last meal would be either sushi or ramen or pho, any Vietnamese dish and then some kind of gelato. Oh yeah, and some champagne. If I could have just like a last meal in general, um, yeah, it'd be my dad's tacos. My last meal, definitely be filet mignon, crab cake, love crab cakes, and I would have a strawberry daiquiri. That's like one of my favorite drinks. Eggplant parmesan, because it's just something I really love. Now I feel really bad about like eating those things, and I'm like, oh gosh, no. Cereal. I'd be a cereal not killer, but I'd, I'd be a cereal eater. Nah, a steak. A steak seems good, medium rare, filet mignon, uh, maybe a tender greens uh, steak sandwich too. Eggs sound good. Hash browns are really good. so. I'm gonna go smorgasbord and a waffle. Why not? And a waffle and French toast. F it. <laughs> it's my last meal. I'm balling out. <laughs> Thanks for watching us dissect criminals on the React channel. If you like this episode, then hit that like button, murderer. Subscribe. New shows every day. Hi guys. Hey guys, Sabrina here, React channel producer. Subscribe so you can see all our reactors every week. Go there. Bye.